Hi YouTube, AC Dot here again, and just a quick video on how to measure coil primary resistance. All you need for this activity is a basic multimeter. Now I'm using a cheap one here because that's representative of um, the sorts of meter that most DIY mechanics have. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this video is because uh, I've noticed recently that uh, pretty much uh, well, most minis or most A-series engines I come out to set up have all got the wrong coils fitted, so I'm having to spend a lot of time replacing coils and things like that. And actually, what it comes down to is a misunderstanding or or lack of education on either the owner or the car builder's um, you know part. So, uh, a quick guide here uh, on how to identify your coils, um, and 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 a quick uh, guide on you know which one should be fitted to what vehicle. So. What we'll do is we'll go through how to identify the coil. I've got a number of coils here, uh, the mostly Viper ones, um, and you can see they're all they're all very similar looking, um, but they're all most of them are completely different. Uh, and we've also got a Lucas wet coil there as well, so uh, a traditional one, and uh, some of the more modern uh, dry units. Okay, so taking our meter, uh, this is a, a nice simple. Uh, you know digital automotive analyzer uh nice and cheap so like you know 25 30 40 quid something like that that sort of price range nothing uh nothing expensive um but first of all what you want to do uh to measure the coil primary resistance is set your meter up with your two pr uh, probes connected in one to the common uh and one on the uh obviously the positive or in this case it's the voltage the positive voltage or the ohm scale uh, switch your meter on and you'll need the ohms setting so on this one uh, it's the 200 and you'll also notice there's a little uh, uh, mark there uh, symbol there and that's for a sounder okay so uh, what we'll do is we'll just lift the back of the meter out so when we when we stand it up you can see the readings if I get my terminals and connect them together you can hear the noise, which is the sounder, uh, which means there's continuity, and that basically just means it's below a certain resistance. You'll also notice that the meter won't zero, and that's usually because uh, the resistance in the leads and the circuit. One of the other things you can do, uh, if your meter's reading higher than that, is just to do what I did there, was just to twiddle the uh, rotary switch, which cleans the terminals. As you can see, mine hasn't changed so it's still 0.2. That's important because that figure, when we measure anything, we need to take that 0.2 off of the figure that we measure. Anyway, so we take a coil, and in order to do it, it's nice and simple. The two, two terminals, one there and one there, we simply measure across the terminals and take the reading. And you see that one says 2.9, but we must remember to go back over to the first terminal just to check our meter and lead resistance, which is 0.2. So the 0 0.2 off of the 2.9, that's a 2.7 ohm coil. So that coil is to be used on ignition systems using no ballast and a 12 volt direct feed, uh, typically points ignition. So uh, early, you know, uh, 1960s minis, etc., um, up until the late 70s. Okay or early 80s so let's take this coil what do we think this one is well we don't know what it is check our meter again as you can see changes 0.2 so across the terminals as before that one says 1.6 1.5 okay take the 0.2 off that's 1.3 so that is uh, a coil for a ballasted ignition so that would run on uh, a, an 80s mini with a ballast wire or indeed any mini that you fitted the appropriate ballast resistor to. So in the case of the power spark dizzies, these Viper ones, uh, you would use a 1.6 ohm ballast resistor, use that in line with this, uh, and then you would have uh, a higher energy ignition at higher RPM than you would do using the standard 12 volt one, which is why it's important to use the correct coil and the ballast resistor. The other thing about the ballast resistor is you get much sharper starting, so the cold start performance is improved because it shorts out the ballast resistor, 
uh, when you crank the ignition, thus putting main battery voltage across the uh, uh, full power to the coil, and you get a nice big fat spark when you're cranking. So this is the coil set up to use on any Mini, in my view, uh, unless, of course, you've got electronic ignition. So moving on, let's measure the next one. Again, same thing. Okay, across the terminals, and we measure the resistance. You can see the reading now. That says 1 ohm. Take the lead resistance off, which is 0.2. So that's 0 0.8. So this, this coil is not a coil that we would use on a, a points ignition system on a classic Mini. This is a coil uh, that you would use on a 65D um, factory uh, electronic ignition. Um, and the reason why you use this is because it's a much higher output. So you can run uh, a bigger uh, spark plug gap. And the distributor, uh, the reason uh, why that distributor was used is because it has variable dwell. So at low speeds, it reduces the coil charge time um, simply because it doesn't need it uh, because this is a very high end coil. And then at high speeds, it increases the dwell angle to maintain the coil power right the way through the rev range. So the 65D is a variable dwell dizzy. When used with the uh, 0.8 ohm coil, it's also used without a ballast resistor. So this 0.8 ohm coil is used uh, with a direct 12 volt feed. Okay, no ballast resistor. It's the only application on a mini that uses no ballast resistor with a low ohm coil. So uh, it's not it's not too difficult to get to get uh, uh, wrong. Okay. Um, other coil. This is a traditional wet coil. So this is a, a genuine Lucas replacement. As you can see there, it's got the, the Lucas written on. It's obviously upside down, but don't worry about that. Uh, again, same thing. Uh, measure across the terminals. And we can see that one is 2.9. Ergo, connect them together, minus the 0.2. So that's a, also a 2.7 ohm coil. Now, the other thing about this one, you can hear it sloshing around. That's a wet coil, so that's got oil inside, so that's a traditional coil. Um, I, uh, nowadays, uh, tend to move away from these coils, and I fit the dry coils like a modern car. Um, I find these work better, and I get good spark performance, and um, I generally don't have an issue. However, in the odd occasion you do have an issue, this is a failed um, Viper unit. And it failed because it was fitted on a car, um, and the spark plug gaps were too wide for the for the for the application. So basically, it was the wrong specification. So uh, these Viper coils, I find, are excellent when they're used in their uh, application. But uh, this was used on a 65D Dizzy. It's a 1.5 ohm, and when the spark plug gap was uh, increased, it didn't do the coil any good. So uh, what actually happened here is, although when you measure across here you can see that this is about 1.4 when we take off the uh, lead reading, okay? And then what I'm gonna do now is check the resistance to the secondary winding. So if we just go across there, you'll see on this coil, there's no output, okay? So if we go to another coil, do the same test, you'll see you'll get a reading for the secondary resistance, okay? So that's one check you can do if you've got a broken coil or a coil that stopped working is to see if you've got actually uh, a circuit resistance um, and that'll all vary a little bit. If you've got no resistance like on that one, well, clearly there's no circuit, so therefore it's not gonna um, uh, actually function, okay? So the most important thing to understand there is uh, being able to check the primary resistance is the main function of selecting the appropriate coil um, is very important and it's the thing that most mini owners and indeed most classic car owners get wrong. So there seems to be a thing where people want to fit a 3 ohm coil to absolutely everything and in reality all you're doing is you're just uh, putting the car back in time to the 1960s, whereas actual fact you're doing, um, you know, you're detuning the engine effectively because it should have a much more modern coil um, 
with lower resistance and a ballast resistor. As you can see here, this is a typical aftermarket ballast resistor. This is a power spark unit. I recommend these when you're converting from 3 ohm to 1.5 ohm coils on any four cylinder classic car. And uh, if you look round on the back of it, you'll notice it's uh, rated at 1.6 ohms. With lower resistance and a ballast resistor, typically on, a, on an 80s car with points ignition, um, which will generate more power uh, across the spark. Um, there is a video which I've done uh, back on my channel which uh, uh, demonstrates the um, differences um, and how a ballast system works versus a normal system and why you get more power. Anyway, hopefully you find that useful. Um, just a quick video there on how to do the various checks. Um, so, uh, as ever... Please share, like and subscribe. Thank you very much.